Welcome back to Willie Farms. I'm Donna Cavender and I'm here on our newly renovated bridge. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Between our greenhouse area and the nursery stock. Stop by sometime and take a stroll over our new bridge. We're located right here on Route 13. Very easy to find. Just four miles south of Odessa or about five or six miles north of Smyrna. Now, if you're traveling on one, it's still easy to find. You get off in Odessa, go south on 13. Get off the north exit in Smyrna and come up north on Route 13. And we're right here on the, uh, on the northbound side of Route 13. So stop by anytime. We'd love to see you. We got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about things you never knew we had here at Willie Farms. We're also going to do a spot on how to choose and slice up a fresh pineapple and how to open a fresh coconut. That's interesting. Wait till you see that. But right now, we're going to go with Heather from uh, Michelle Seeds, one of our flower growers. She's got some great demonstrations on how you can make some great container flowers. So let's check in with her right now. Well, here we are in another of my favorite places here at Willie Farms. It's the greenhouse. Doesn't it look gorgeous? And today we are back here and we're going to talk with Heather from Michelle Seed. And thank you for coming, Heather. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Well, I good. love playing with flowers. <laughs> and you're going to tell us all about container gardening in lots of different situations. So let's get started. What are we, we've, we've got a beautiful pot here. We do have a beautiful pot, and that's your first step is to pick a pot that you really like. This is probably your best investment, so pick a pot that's gonna last for a while in a palette of colors that you enjoy. Make sure you're matching your siding with your house. Right, right. Um, and choose a theme. If you're going for a festive party look on your patio, sure. you're going to want a bright color. If you're looking for something a little more elegant, mm -hmm. you might want a quieter pot. This now, is very all-purpose. Now, do we have to worry about drainage or putting something in the bottom before we put the potting soil on top? That's or the like old-time that? way of doing things, oh. but they have found that potting soil all the way through is perfect. Okay. You well, actually get better drainage that way. So I'm old, so that's, <laughs> that's how I think. Okay. Uh, moving, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> moving on. Okay. okay. We've got our pot. We've so, got our soil. No gravel in the bottom. That okay. will just make a pool of water. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the newest trend, which I really love, love there's several new trends with containers one is to use edibles the other is to use perennials and shrubs in your containers and the other is to see your container as entertainment oh which incorporates okay. pollinators Oh, For instance, okay. bringing hummingbirds and butterflies and we to love the patio that. we love that here yes and it's so good it's for the environment and this area. So this is a blueberry that has been bred for a container. It's called a brazzleberry. Brazzleberry, okay. And there's okay. several different varieties. They're made to stay small in containers and be loaded with fruit. And this, we can just come out and take some fruit and Absolutely. Eat it. And cool. isn't it beautiful? Look at the foliage. It's gorgeous. And this one is peach sorbet. Peach sorbet for the coppery color on okay. the new foliage, right. which we're going to play off that color with the plants we choose. Okay. So what do we add in next? So now we have a fruit. Now we're going to play off that orange with vermilion air from Proven Winners. And this okay. is Hummingbird Airport. Oh, okay, just, and I see that that's, the hummingbirds would love that. They do. The traffic, once you've got this planted um, in your patio or your area, you will hear the hummingbirds all day coming Wonderful. in and out of that. All right, so, and next we go, oh, we're going to Well, put we're going to put two in? because they will actually fight over this. <laughs> okay. So we want to give them a couple of options to get in there. And, and I understand that they are kind of territorial. They they. They like, are. Don't be around me while I'm doing this. Yeah, they yeah. they want to protect their food supply. Okay. Can't blame them for that. So continuing on the orange, this is a dreamsicle calabrica. Love the dreamsicle. Great name. Yes. A yummy name. Excellent. They always come up with such great names. They for do, all of don't these. they? Yes. Um, I love proven winners. Their stuff performs all summer long. The nice thing about this pot is there will be no deadheading. There will be very little maintenance. Oh, okay. Feed is most important. All right. So is this a good pot for a beginner gardener? It's an excellent pot. Okay, good. This is an excellent pot really for anybody. 
Uh, even an experienced gardener okay. would be thrilled to have this. And I love the little white, that's so pretty. This is diamond frost, euphorbia. And this little thing doesn't look like much just by itself, but this is like a baby's breath. Okay. Tough as nails, looks so delicate, always is clean and pretty in the garden. And this will soften the whole container. This white will grow through everything. Oh, okay. It'll intermingle. And just soften the effect. Great. Um, really and beautiful. What do we got? Two more that we're going to get in there. We're we're, we're going to add a little more. Oh, we're going to okay. add some some lemon thyme, and this is going to be our spiller over the top, the front of our container. Yes, because I have learned over the last few years that we have thrillers. We have thrillers. Those are the ones that are high up. We have fillers. Fillers that go around, and then we have spillers. And we have spillers, and they go over the edge. See, they I, do. I, I pay attention and I learn. All right, and the other dimension to the lime time is that you can put this in marinades for chicken and fish. Oh, great. So you can have this on your patio and serve a barbecue and you will have the hummingbirds entertaining your guests. You will be able to tell them that the marinade came from the time that's there also in the pot. Boy. It's really an all-purpose thing. Okay. I'm gonna add some more orange here to the front just to make it a little more showy. We like showy. We do what? We like yes, showy. Yes, don't hesitate to crowd your pot. You've got plenty of soil in the depth of the pot. Okay. So it will take you through the season. And people will be very impressed with this after you get it done. I okay, would be. So, yes. So it looks like we have like one more spot. Okay. So let's put, let's show people we've got one more little spot One more there. little spot in the back. This is a coleus that will grow in sun or shade. This particular one is called Merlin's Magic. Oh my gosh, so many different colors Isn't of the coleus. Isn't that gorgeous? It's amazing. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So Let's this pop will it in there. fill in the back nicely and you'll have that Wonderful. beautiful purpley That's lime green great. color. That's beautiful. So you've got edibles and flowers. Correct. In and here. your pollinators coming in. Right, the butterflies. So your entertainment and the bees. aspect. Very good. Excellent. Okay, so this is for sun or shade. This is for sun. It will for tolerate. Sun. sun is considered three to four hours okay. of sun. Okay. So uh, most everything in, as a matter of fact, everything in this pot is pretty shade tolerant. In general, maybe once a day watering. Once a day watering. Okay. I would put it on an automatic waterer. That's what I do at home. All right. And these are some other uh, shades these are, or sun? These are some other sun plants? Sun options okay. because some people are not going to like the orange palette. Right. So we could easily go with the purples instead okay. with a purple basil. So basil, okay. And this a is? Blue phlox. This is called right. um, Intensia blueberry. And what is this here? This is a canna and this will variegated. Look at that beautiful right. leaf. So that like will green. make a nice tassel. And this is pretty? This is? This is Baptisia. This is a perennial. Oh, okay. And a beautiful new variety with a grape colored spikes. And this right. can be left in the container or can be planted in the yard later. Great. Will live forever. So we love the perennials. Okay, Great so perennial. we've taken care of sun. Yes. And next up is shade, right? Correct. Okay, next up shade. And now we've moved on to shade, and we've moved to a larger container here, Heather. All right, we've got a beautiful, this is a whiskey barrel, right? They call these whiskey barrels? Okay, full of dirt. Ready Let's to go. go. Ready okay, to go. we're going to do the front porch now. Uh, we're going to go for our thriller. There are so many options for the shade. So many different things we could do. Beautiful hostas. Uh, I'm going to pick King Tut. She's, he's a graceful grass. King Tut, okay. He will get up to six feet tall, so he's a great big guy. Oh, wow. Guy. So that's definitely a thriller. He will also um, go in a, a water garden. Very versatile, does sun, does shade. These blooms will eventually be about the size okay. of a basketball. And this is the bloom? That is the bloom. Okay. And that will expand to about that size. Okay, cool. So, so it's now just we're moving gonna get on bigger to and better. Now, this fillers. is a new pasta called We. And this will be a filler because this is a smaller one. I love the little uh, the ridges. ridges. That's why it's yeah. called wee. Because okay. you go wee. <laughs> okay. Um, and we're also going to fill in with some bright colors. We're in the shade now, so right. we really want to light the corner up. Okay. And this is a coleus, right? This is a coleus. Hey, see, I'm paying attention. 
<laughs> Today's coleuses can do sun or shade. Oh, okay. And actually, the, the colors will intensify All right. in the sun. So, so we kind of spread them out. Spread them out, look for uh, dots of color. Now, the best option in shade for a really good bloom is a begonia. Begonias. They are just Tried the and greatest. true, right? They keep going in deep, deep shade and Gorgeous give color. you that color that you're not going to find anywhere else. And that will play off the coleus and add right. some more glow to. Since we're going for a glowy look and we're trying to light up the shade. Oh, right. OK. For our spillers, oh, we'll nice. use a lemon coral sedum. And that will spill over the side. And with that bright light green, that will be another bright spot on your porch. Now that spills home. over, but does it also spread? It will spread okay. and, and spill over awesome. and fill the area. Another great plant. Oh, that's pretty. Doesn't look like much in the pot. This is like. frosty night. This is a lobliaria. It's like the old fashioned alyssum, but it never stops blooming. Oh, that's this, nice. This will bloom right up until Thanksgiving. Great, we like that. So let's and put that, that in And that is another spiller that will spill over. Also smells like honey. Has oh, a great nice. fragrance. Oh, I love this. So that will attract your pollinators. Okay. Of course, butterflies will come into your begonias. And just for a touch of whimsy, I'd like to add this other coleus is called Spumoni. <laughs> and I'm adding this just because, because it kind of looks like Spumoni. It sounds so delicious. How about that? That will add another touch of some purple. Okay. Here, and don't be afraid to incorporate some tropicals. This oh. is just a variegated ivy but it's continuing that yellow mm -hmm. theme that we're doing. And that will be another. We a, yep, we got yep. a spot for that right over another there. Another unusual thriller oh, that's there. Pretty. So that's you have pretty, a yeah. lot of interest. And you don't have to worry about it, putting two of each or three of each, or you can just pick whatever ones you want. Fill your container and make okay. yourself happy right from the start. Okay. Don't plant for it to grow. Plant for it to be happy this weekend okay. and enjoy it. Wonderful, great. Thank you so much, Heather. It's been Thank a pleasure. You for You've been, me. Oh, we've Excuse got all gloves. kinds. No, that's okay. We always get all kinds of great information, and this is gorgeous. And I'm sure everybody's just going to go right outside and try and make one for themselves. I hope you do, and I hope you love it. Okay. Happy planting. <laughs> Hello again. When you think of Willie Farms, what do you think of? Well, you think of flowers and plants and produce, but. We have so much more than that. So many times when we have people coming in the door, they look around and they go, oh, I didn't know you had that. Oh, I didn't know you had that. So this is called, I didn't know you had that. And let's take a look at some of those things. Some of those things. Did you know that we have books? And of course, they're great books for all of the great information information on coconut oil and many different diets. There's a family cookbook here that's great. Smoothies, if you're into smoothies, a whole book on what to do with the smoothies. So there you go, we have books. Did you know that we have freshly ground nut butters? This one happens to be chocolate peanut butter. This one is natural peanut butter, of course. And this is almond butter. Freshly ground right here in our nut butter grinder right here and you can see we have a great supply we have to keep a great supply too because they're very very popular but maybe you didn't know we had these something else we have this is brand new himalayan salt plate it is a large block of salt and you cook on it and you do all kinds of great things on it now this one is round and it's packaged nicely it's all packed up we have the round ones we have the longer ones as well and this is, like I say, brand new, so you need to stop by and check out these salt plates. Very, very nice. Ever had a burn and you needed some aloe? Have you ever seen an aloe leaf that big? We've got them. And of course, you can cook with it as well. So stop by and take a look at those. And we also have really great Delaware memorabilia like this. This is beautiful. It comes in this little pouch and it's a beautiful Delaware towel. You could use it for a hand towel or a dish towel or a bar towel or just lay it up and look at it because it's really, really pretty. 
We also have these coasters that have the state silhouette on there. It says home, nice coasters. And of course we have the uh, lots of tumblers and cups and things that say Delaware on it too. So really cool Delaware memorabilia. Did you know that we have soaps? And this is just a, just a minute uh, part of all of the soaps that we have here at Willie Farms. Great, and they smell so good. This one, lavender and sage. Oh, I wish we had smell-o-vision. Ooh, because <laughs> it's really, really nice. Slippers, did you know we could get slippers? I love these slippers. If you're into leopard, there you go. Lots of slippers. This is something new too. This is called an e-cloth, and this is just one of lots of different varieties that we have. We even have uh, floor mops and wall mops, and they're all from this e-cloth, and it's all very environmental friendly. You can use this without any harsh chemicals and dish soaps and all that sort of thing. And I have one at home. I took one home to try it out. It works great. So check out our supply of e-cloths. Everybody loves a party. We can help you out with the party. We've got cocktail mixers, all kinds kinds of cocktail mixers, all different flavors, margaritas, Bloody Marys, we've got them here. Down in the home accent area also, pillows. Beautiful pillows. This is very, very nice and colorful. This one, this is so soft when I was bringing it up. It's just so soft. It will look great at your beach house if you have a beach house. I don't have one, but if you have one, you should stop by and get one of these. It's really, really soft and beautiful. Now, yes, we do have plants and flowers here at Willie Farms, but we have some really different ones too. As you'll see right here, peanut. These are peanut plants, and yes, you grow them, you'll get peanuts. Back here, interesting, this is called mother of millions plant. And you see all these little babies? They'll eventually drop off and they'll drop down and that's why it continues to grow. And if you don't want it to grow right where it is, then you can just take one off and you go plant it where you want it. And there it grows. Now, let me go through the tropics here, around on this other side, whoo, banana tree. If you have a greenhouse or a very warm spot, you might be able to do that in this area. Banana tree. Then we have these Riesling grape plants. Aren't they the cutest things? Yes, the same thing that they make wine out of. Very, very cool. This is something very, I don't want to say rare, but you don't see it a lot. It's a yellow geranium, okay? And then back here, this is called the popcorn plant. No, it doesn't grow bags of popcorn for you to take to the movies. But if you take one of these leaves and kind of just brush it on your fingers and then smell your fingers, when's the movie start? Smells just like popcorn. And of course, these are seasonal. We have them right now at Willie Farms, and right now we're filming in May, so consider that when you're watching. But we've got all these really cool things. You might be walking through the greenhouse and see a peanut plant and go, I didn't know you had that. So there you go, all the things, and this isn't all, just a few of the things that you might not have known that we have here at Willie Farms. So hopefully you'll stop by and check out all the other things that we have. Okay. Well, here we are in the tropics of Willie Farms. Yes, we're, we're here at the sampling station, but we're kind of in our, our tropical area because yeah. right now we're gonna talk about, Eileen and I are gonna talk about pineapples. That's first. So mm -hmm. how to choose a pineapple yes. and then how to cut it. Great. So do you know how to choose Oh, pineapple? yes. yes. You do? The first okay. thing I look at is the bottom. Okay. Uh, making sure that the bottom is nice and yellow. It has a real good smell. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, at the top, uh, you should be able to pick a nice leaf and be able to pull it out Just very easily. Yeah. There you go. Uh, absolutely. That's Pulls right. right out. It's not going right. to be yellow all the way through, uh, but if it tends to be greener on the bottom side and you want it within a couple days, just turn it upside down in a vase because it does ripen from the bottom up, which is why you don't see any yellow here. Turn it upside down the vase and then it'll ripen here and meet the bottom. Oh, okay, the so all yeah. the sugars and the juices and everything will just yes. distribute throughout. Absolutely. Okay, cool. All right, so now we've, we've chosen our, our pineapple and we cut the bottom, right? Yes. Cut the bottom. We forgot our garbage bowl. We did. And you cut the top. Okay. Turn it up like this. You got all this on the outside, so then you just start Cutting. Did you turn it upside down? 
Did I turn it upside down? Remember we were going, yeah. That's right, okay. We're gonna cut from the bottom down. Gotcha. See, apparently I wasn't paying attention. You told me. <laughs> <laughs> and then the juices, the ripe juices will run down to what might not be as ripe. Okay. Oh, and this way nice. you try to, oh, can you smell I it? I do, I love oh, pineapple. Oh, it smells so good. There's nothing quite like fresh pineapple. Mm -hmm. The canned stuff is nice, but to have it fresh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just okay. no comparison. There's no comparison. No. Okay, so we've got all of the uh, the outside off. Mm -hmm. We still have some of these little little eyelets, and I was told your little peeler with the little uh, point cool. on the end that you can um, you can get those eyes out just by oh, nice. doing that. That's good. So you before can you that. start slicing. Before you yeah, start that's slicing, a good idea. yeah. So you would go around and do all that. We'll pretend that we, we went around and got all those little eyes out. That's right. And there are a number of different ways that people uh, talk about how they want to uh, cut their pineapple. You can cut it down this way, cut it down that way. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the core in the middle. Right. And then you can just slice that core out or like you get it in the can, mm -hmm. you can do slices like this. And that center's not real tough. No, it's not real tough. And you don't really have to take it out if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Or you get to this point, give it a little slice like that, give it a little slice like that, nice. and then you can yeah. take that little core out. And there you go. I like that. Beautiful piece of fresh Beautiful. pineapple. Or yes. you can come to Willie Farms and have it already cored for you. Yes, that's true. We do, do uh, Let already us cored. Let us do it for you. In the kit, we do it for and you. And they are picked fresh and they're picked ripe. So you know that it's going to be ripe if Willie Farms has cut it for you. Absolutely, yeah. And you don't have to do this, but mm. hey, it's kind of fun, you know? And you could do this with the kids. Anytime. Of course, you you do the cutting. Mm -hmm. The kids don't do that, but it lets the kids know exactly where all this comes yes. from, you know? How it began. How it all began, mm -hmm. yes. It just doesn't arrive on your table in a bowl and it's automatically fruit salad. That's right, Cause, like this is a banana tree. That's a banana tree. Yeah. So if we had a nice warm spot, we could grow bananas. Absolutely. All right. And cool. Who knows, you know, not everybody knows that. They think they just come from Willie Farms. <laughs> right. People don't know where the bananas come from. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got our our delicious fresh pineapple. Right. On to the coconut. And on to the coconut. Yeah. There we go. And and what better to um, include in your fruit salad than fresh pineapple and fresh coconut? Okay fresh coconut not out of the bag not out of the jar fresh coconut okay mm -hmm. so you choose your fresh coconut looks kind of funky yes. not quite sure what to do with it but it's got three eyes right here you find the one that is the softest you make sure it has juice yes. make, make sure, sure it, it has, has fluid juice. yes and we can sometimes that's fluid. not even enough you check the eye second okay then you get a screwdriver, yes, a screwdriver, and you clean it, make sure it's nice and clean, yes. and then you take that eye, and then you just put the screwdriver down into that eye. Well, maybe this isn't the I'm eye. Stepping that, back. Yeah, I know. Well, you have to find that one eye. There, there you go. There's the one. Okay. okay, so you put the screwdriver down in that eye, move it around a little bit, and then, where'd my glass go? Now, of course, you know, with uh, physics, it's just one, one hole, okay. so it's not going to come out very good. No. But if you shake it, it oh comes gosh, right it out. It looks beautiful. And coconut milk, coconut water is so good for you. It's really good for you. So uh, it's, it's multiple things that you can get from mm -hmm. doing this fresh coconut. Yeah. Coconut water rehydrator. Yeah, Gives it's, you all the energy. It's really awesome. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Good in smoothies. Yeah, yeah and, of and one of these coconuts you get about, I think it's about eight ounces out of the coconut. And after, and you don't have to do another thing to this fluid. Boy, there's a lot in this there's, one. I, that was a fresh one. There is a lot. Because, of course, you know that I had to practice doing this. Oh, of course. Before. I'm glad it was you, not me. I didn't know what to do with <laughs> And it. I think the one that I did didn't have quite that much. But okay. there you go. And, I mean, you could, it's yeah. got a little bit of the, the husk that has fallen in there. But mm. it's still. And that's going to happen. 
it's still mm, coconut water. I feel healthier already. Now you have to get into it to get the meat. Now you know Stand why back. there's a hammer. Yeah. And Stand you wash back. and clean the hammer. Oh, You've yes. You've already washed. Absolutely, absolutely. And you go around the equator of the of the coconut, just giving it a good, I can, it's, I can hear it. You can hear it. It's, Give it a good whack. The meat is coming away from that outer. Yeah, oh, there you go. There Very you go. Nice. All that wonderful. Look at that meat. Nice and, nice and thick yeah, in there. Nice beautiful. and thick. Of course, and then you need to um, get that meat out of there. And you could always rinse this off. Yeah, you, you can, know, you can. And that's what I did the other day. Yeah. Uh, the other day when I did it, and you go in and just start to cut that meat, make a little, make a little sliver. And it will come out. It's, as always, it's hard to get that first, first part out. Mm -hmm. but there you go. Start getting it now, yes. It's got that on the back end. Mm -hmm. but it's very easy, it's not hard. Just pair that off. Oh gosh, it's That's so good. That's the inside of the husk. My mouth it is, is watering for it. <laughs> gosh, it's it so It is so, so good. Yummy. So there you go. Thank you. There's a piece. Can't get any fresher, unless fresh, I was you know, in Hawaii. Right, fresh, fresh, fresh mm. coconut. So of course, it will take you a little time mm -hmm. to get all that out. But once you get it all out, you have this lovely coconut. That was from one coconut? Yes, that wow. is. And actually, I use the coconut that I got out of the one that I did the other night okay. to make something. Mm. And I have a wonderful recipe for impossible pie. It's a, uh, like a coconut custard pie, and it is awesome. This recipe has been in my family for a long time. We didn't think it up but we've used it for a long time. It's called Impossible Pie. Why is it called Impossible Pie? Because what you do is you get your blender out, nice big blender. You put in two cups of milk, four eggs, a half a cup of baking mix, just a little bit of salt, a cup of sugar, a teaspoon and a half of vanilla, and a cup of shredded coconut, okay. and then a stick of butter. And what I did was- That doesn't sound impossible. It doesn't, and it's really easy. I have this as my grater, and um, I held it over a cup. Just take a piece. Oh, there you go. Grate it, there you go. Oh, that's easy. It's easy. Mm -hmm. So you put all those ingredients into the um, blender and just blend it, and it it's soupy. It looks like a milkshake. Okay. You put it into a greased pie pan very carefully because it will slosh. Yeah. <laughs> very carefully, put it in the oven. You bake it 350 for about 45 minutes and it comes out looking like this. Wow. Very good. And like I said, it is a um, it is a like a coconut custard. Gorgeous. Do a little for any time, I think. Cuz you can get coconut all year long. Oh, you don't yeah. have to wait for a certain no, season. No, no, no. No. I like your gadget. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This gadget, this is a single serve. It's and you can oh, get, we have that here at, at Willie Farms. Wow. There we go. We have everything you have here. I think we yes, can carry we do. baking dishes down the gift area. We do carry baking dishes. And it's you know beautiful. what we don't have? What? We don't have utensils right here to try out this pie. Oh, that's not good. But I have fingers. Me too. Okay. We'll try the pie. Oh my gosh, I'm trying it. I okay. can't, this is my favorite part. And you can see, there's the, uh, mm. isn't that good? Yeah. <laughs> there That's you very, go. very good. There you go. So you've Thank got you, the, Donna. you're welcome. You've got the really fresh coconut and pineapple that's really, really good for you. And you've got the really good coconut pie that, well, we won't talk about how good it is for you. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for now. Well, that wraps up another show. Here we are in the garden center. And in our garden center, we've got everything from hummingbird feeders to garden gloves to spray nozzles and a whole bunch more. But you need to stop by and check it all out. We're very easy to find right on Route 13. 
just a little bit uh, south of Odessa, just a little bit north of Smyrna. We're open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., so we hope that you'll stop by and check it out. I hope you enjoyed the segments today, and I hope that you're going to try some of them as well. I want to remind you that we've got a special event coming up in June. On June 20th, we're going to host a blood drive for the Blood Bank of Delaware, and we'll have more details on that coming up. You can check us out on Facebook and find out more details there. And of course, you can always check us out on our website. That's www.williefarmsde.com. Well, that's it for this time. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.